This is the Nile, the great river in Egypt that you have read about in your histories and geographies. About 4,000 miles in length, the Nile is the longest river in Africa. The Nile flows northward through more than half the length of the continent. In the upper Nile basin, the river is fed by two main tributaries, the Blue Nile, which comes out of the mountains of Ethiopia, and the White Nile, which has its source in Lake Victoria. These combine to form the great river that flows northward through the lower Nile Valley into the Mediterranean Sea. Closely bordering the river are the Libyan and Arabian deserts. These are vast, dry lands, deserts with little rain, hot days, and cold nights. Here the blazing sun beats down on sand and rocks. But in the midst of the desert is the green Egyptian oasis along the Nile, a fertile strip of land averaging 10 miles in width. Here, rich soil has been deposited year after year for thousands of years by the annual flooding of the Nile. Over 15 million people live in this narrow, fertile valley. Cities such as Cairo, near the mouth of the Nile, are centers of valley life. Through the historic city of Cairo passes most of the traffic and commerce of the Nile Valley. On the wharves of Cairo, products from the Nile Valley are unloaded. Foodstuffs, such as vegetables and fruits. Many of the foodstuffs are sold in the open markets, or bazaars, of the old sections of Cairo. Here, Egyptians of the lower Nile Valley trade goods from many parts of Africa. Some products of the valley are exported from Cairo, which is the railroad center. Imports distributed from Cairo include automobiles and other manufactured goods. But the life of the city still depends largely on the Nile, the most common means of transportation. As we go southward up the Nile, we'll see something of a way of life both past and present. Graceful boats called feluccas sail the Nile as they have done for centuries. Not far from Cairo are the famous pyramids of ancient Egypt. These tremendous monuments were built by Egyptians who lived in the Nile Valley about 5,000 years ago. And ever since, Egyptians have been living along the banks of the Nile, tilling the fertile soil. To bring the waters of the river up into their fields, Egyptians since ancient times have been using this device called a shadouf. The counterweight helps the farmer lift the bucket of water from the canal. Then he empties it into an irrigation ditch leading into his field. Here is another ancient irrigation device, the water wheel. The revolving buckets lift the water from one ditch into another at a higher level. Such methods are part of a vast irrigation system that has made the valley of the lower Nile a rich farming region. To conserve and regulate the waters of the Nile, a number of dams have been built. The dam at Aswan is the largest of these. The great dam at Aswan regulates the amount of water that flows down the lower Nile. Water stored behind the dam during the flood period can be released so there is a continuous supply of water throughout the year. Smaller dams, called barrages, have been built across the lower Nile to divert water from the river to the irrigation system, water that is so vital to the farmers of lower Egypt. Find farm people living in villages, like this one along the Nile. From the village where they live, the men go out to the fields with their work animals, which are a kind of buffalo. While the men are gone, we'll find the women of a typical family working about the house. The two daughters are grinding beans in a simple stone mill. 
Inside the cool, dark house, with its walls of mud brick, Mother sets out a simple meal of cornbread, cheese, vegetables, and melon. Most of the food this family eats is grown by the father and his two sons in their fields outside the village. Let's meet these Egyptian farmers plowing the land with their oxen. The father's name is Hassan. Helping him plow is Ali, his younger son, who guides the oxen. Hassan wears a turban on his head to keep off the hot sun. The plow he is using is a simple wooden one, much like the plows that were drawn by cattle in ancient times in the same land. Hassan and his sons farm about five acres of land. They can grow several crops a year because of the rich soil, a year-round warm climate, and irrigation. Working on one of the irrigation ditches is Hassan's oldest son, Selim. He is deepening the ditch, getting it ready to carry water from the Nile. Nearby, Selim sees one of his neighbors letting the water run into a field. By opening and closing the ditches, a farmer can regulate the flow of water until the whole field is flooded, like this. After flooding, crops are planted crops such as beans, one of the vegetables that most families raise here. This is a field of maize, or corn, a plant imported from the new world to the old world. The important crop is cotton, which is raised and sold for money. As Selim works, he is joined by his father and younger brother, and together they talk of planting the next crop. Meanwhile, in the village, the rest of Hassan's family is busy. His two daughters are going for water. How beautifully she carries the heavy jug. This is a daily chore, filling the jug with water from one of the village pumps. While one girl carries the water, her younger sister decides to visit the village center. Here is a modern health clinic, a bathhouse, and a library. On her way home along the village street, the older sister passes a school. Inside the open courtyard, we can see the teacher and his class. Classes are often held outdoors in hot countries such as Egypt. The boys are busily reciting their lessons aloud. The boy wearing the turban is named Mohammed. He is the youngest son of the family we have been watching. Doesn't he seem serious about his lesson? Mohammed is 11 years old and attends this free elementary school regularly. After school, Mohammed has certain chores to do. It's his job to ride the donkey to the fields to help bring in the tools. Up he goes, and he's off to the fields. As he rides out past the mud brick houses of the village, his father and brothers are just finishing their work for the day. Mohammed rides across the fertile fields, past tall date palm trees, to join his brothers and his father. Now the oldest boy, Selim, will ride the donkey back home. Father loads the wooden plow and Selim holds it steady. Then they start for home, carrying the rest of their tools. Another workday is ended for this farm family, one of many farm families who live in the fertile land of the lower Nile Valley. Let's remember that the waters of the Nile are vital to life in the valley. Through flooding and irrigation, the land has been made fertile, and the valley produces a wealth of crops almost all the year round. Today, the farmers follow a pattern of living that has gone on for thousands of years in the fertile lands 
along the lower valley of the Nile.